functions that are used the most while graphing are these five, listed in order of most to least used. We have a quadratic function, linear function, sinusoidal function, rational function, and a circle. Before we look at these, what are all these letters inside the functions? Any letter that is not an X or Y represents a number. For example, we see that this function has A, H, and B using these letters. We can input values where E is 1.1, H is 1, and B is negative 2.5. This means the same thing as the function at the bottom. Let's take a look at the quadratic function. A changes the curve of the function as the value of A gets further away from zero. The curve gets thinner. H shifts the curve left and right, and B shifts the curve up and down. Now let's look at the linear function. M changes the slope of the line, where the further away M gets from zero, the steeper it is. B shifts the line up or down. Next, we have the sinusoidal function. The value it changes the amplitude of the wave, where the further the number is from zero, the steeper the curves of the wave get. Next, we have B, which changes the frequency of the waves. As B gets further away from zero, the waves gets closer together. Similarly to the quadratic function, H shifts the curve left and right, and B shifts the curve up and down. Next, we have the rational function. As it gets closer to zero, the more corner-like the curve looks. As it gets further, the more round it is. Similarly to the quadratic function, H shifts the curve left and right, and B shifts the curve up and down. Lastly, we have the circle. R is the radius of the circle. Similarly to the quadratic function, H shifts the curve left and right, and B shifts the curve up and down. <coughs> to end the line or curve, we have to set a domain and or range. Let's say, for example, we want this circle to only display itself in the second quadrant. For this to happen, all x values of the function must be smaller than zero. We do this, we use curly brackets to set the domain as x is smaller than zero. We do the same thing for the range, where we say that y is greater than zero. <coughs> to put the function on its side, swap x and y. With this, everything is basically flipped on the line x. This means that it will still do the same thing, but h makes the function go up and down, and b makes the function go left or right. <coughs> That's it now that we only want an outline of this small area to show. To do this all we have to do is set the domain and ranges of both functions by looking at the intersections. One intersection is at 3.449 and 3.783, while the other is at 4.839 and 3.98. Now we can use the x values of these points to set the domain of both functions. And see that there is still some leftover of the side with quadratic function left, and we can just set the range as y is larger than 3. <coughs> Let's say that I wanted to draw this scribbled line out in Dismos. To get started, we take a screenshot and download it. Then we plug the picture to Dismos and move it to where I want it to be. Just to see our lines a bit better, we can turn down the opacity of this image. For larger Dismos projects, it is better to have different files for functions for different parts of your image. I'm going to separate this function into a left and right side from here. Now, all you need to do is to decide on what section of the outline would best fit the shape of a function. Starting from the left side, the line resembles a quadratic function. So I'm going to create a quadratic function and edit the values for a H and K till it is the best fitting curve. Next, we move on to this section of the line, which looks straight, meaning we can use a linear function. Now, these two functions are overlapping. We set the domain of both functions so they end when they meet. We do the next function, which has a slight curve, which can be interpreted as a quadratic function. Next, we have a curve going sideways rather than up. If you remember, we can flip a function on its side by swapping x and y. Now, we set the appropriate domain and ranges. Moving on to the right side, create a sideways sinusoidal function, a more sideways quadratic functions, and a quadratic function to end it off. There is quite a bit of guess work included in this process, but tracing gets a lot easier with just a little bit of practice. Then I set all domains and ranges to ensure all lines stop where I want them to.
Now we have all of our functions, but the lines are all different colors. To fix this, we can go to the top right of our functions tab, and then we can change the color of the functions to all be red. We can also turn on and off the red line, the functions, or the two parts of the line by pressing the circle beside the end. Now you are ready to graph your function. <laughs>